Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at time aligning a DI with a microphone recording of a bass. This is a, a string bass. This is from one of our sessions we did over the summer in Prague. And I think this is really useful to be able to understand, especially if you want to be able to use both a mic and a DI in a situation where the band is playing all in one room. So here's the overall thing first, just this one section we're going to be aligning this bass note right there. And it's just a nice clean downbeat so we can actually do that pretty well. Here's the microphone on the bass. So you can hear quite a bit of bleed in there and here's the DI. So here's the issue. There's amount of time that happens when you record an instrument, either DI, which goes a lot quicker to the track, as opposed to an acoustic sound, which has a little bit of time. So I'm just going to drag this over. And what I'm really trying to do here is hit a good spot with where the waveforms are crossing. So you can see... I could maybe a little closer, but that one's not bad. This one's generally hitting it. That one's close. This first one is approximately right. Okay, so we want to do a couple listening things. We could continue to really analyze that, but I think that we're close enough in this case to make a difference. Let's put a loop on here for a second. So what I'm going to do is actually make this a little bit bigger. And we're going to look and see where this is now hitting. So the loudest resonance there is above minus 30. I'm going to undo the drag. And now it's between minus 30 and minus 40. So let's redo that drag. So you can see we have a boost right off the bat between the two of them. If I were to take off the DI, it's actually hitting around 30 all by itself on that one frequency. And the DI is down a little bit lower. Now, because they're being mixed together, one of the things we wouldn't expect is to have this be less than the combination of the two of those. Because one of them is up at 30 and the other one's here, we wouldn't expect it to be in the middle there. We would expect it to at least be the loudest one, possibly plus more, which means as it was recorded, we're having some phase cancellation and it's not adding it together. That's where the issue comes with this because the acoustic one is slightly delayed and the DI one comes sooner. What is happening is, is that those are interacting and we're actually getting a reduction or a cancellation of some frequencies along the spectrum. What we want is to have them be boosting so you have this nice correlation between the two tracks if we want to use these, which is what happens when we do that, the drag. So let's come in here. We're going to add that drag again. Just to show you one more time. This time we're going to look a little bit further down the row as well. So you can see that one's not that close. This one is a little bit Let's actually get these ones as they're crossing over the zero point. Not bad. I think we're a lot closer actually than even last time. Okay, once we have those right there, it looks actually pretty good. Now they're adding together. 
This isn't setting the levels for these. We might want to have this a little bit more and the DI just a little bit more of a, an additive amount. But when we put this in the whole mix, that base is going to be fuller. And then we're going to be able to sculpt it with EQ and or compression uh, to get it just how we want it. And now we actually have a full sound where we can actually now tweak it however we want to make it fit with the rest of the instruments. Okay, that's all I want to show today. We're going to be doing a series of this on these tracks, just going over different topics. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like and also make a comment down below. And hope you're having a great week.